Hi, Rachel here with the Charlotte Mason Plenary. Today I'm talking to Larry Jo Edwards. She is our new science education specialist at the Plenary, and she's got some great things planned for y'all. So, Larry Jo, introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about you. Yeah. So my name is Larry Jo Edwards, and I am a marine biologist by original scientific degree. I went on to later uh, become get a master's degree in ecological teaching and learning. That's a fancy way to say I'm a naturalist. And um, so for the last 12 years, I've been working for the Coast Bend Bays and Estuaries program, taking that naturalist background and of course that marine biology background and creating curriculum for their estuarine programs that they run at the New Oasis Delta Preserve. And however, with some family members getting sick, I chose to retire early, very early, and spend some time at home doing the things that I love and am most passionate about. And that's how I've come to find y'all and, and fall into your lots. <laughs> well, you are a treasure to local CM families here, homeschooling families. And, um, you know, we found you through your leading nature walks and doing nature journal classes and all sorts of really cool stuff. And so now you're going to be offering those kinds of classes online through this through the plenary. So right. yeah, so the first one we're doing is called Field Notes Fridays. So can you tell us a little bit about that class? Yes, so the little hashtag Field Notes Friday came from a friend of mine named Taylor who works in North kind of Dallas area. And when she took her kids outside, she would journal with them and kind of created that hashtag. And it kind of stuck with me. I thought it was fun. It, the alliteration there is pretty cool. And when COVID started, I had been a, a devout Field Notes Friday participant myself. But when COVID started, I decided that was a way to get kids outside who were stuck inside on their computers and devices all day long trying to do whether that be homeschool work or, uh, you know, we had a whole lot of traditional students transitioning into basically a homeschool environment. Mm -hmm. And so every Friday, I host about an hour class. And what I do is I give you a subject. So for instance, if this Friday were fungi, um, which it is not, it is zoom in, but that's the page I have for a sample. And um, if this Friday were fungi, then I would have you find some fungus in your nearby nature. So whether that be your backyard or a park or something close to you, you would go out and visit that. So I'd set up the page with you. I do a little background information. You'd spend about 20 minutes in your nearby nature and I would spend about 20 minutes in my nearby nature. And we would come back together and we would talk about our page. So this is an example of the page that I created on fungi with some kids on a Field Notes Friday. And so you'll notice that I actually didn't do a whole lot of drawing on this page because we had a camera out there. So I've got a couple of pictures thrown in here too, but I went ahead and captured some other information. And this page right beside it was a fun page where we were outside with some quail and we did some mapping. So where did the quail go that day? We watched him go from the building to the trip to the feeder and then across the street as well and come back around. So just kind of like the happenings of what the little Bob White did that day. In How cute. Time so that's, that. that's what Field Notes Friday is all about. Spending okay. time outside and making observations. So when someone signs up for Field Notes Friday, first of all, I love that it's both, it's an online class, so anybody anywhere can participate, Correct. but you have the kids actually go outside right. during the class, right? During the class, yes. yes I so love we will that. sit here and we will introduce the information and give you as much information and I will keep it as broad as possible. And I teach Field Notes Friday with people from Spain and Australia and all over the world anyway. Um, so I try to keep them really broad activities that you can find something in your nearby nature. So I would not do the exact Bob White quail with you. We would talk about right. mapping and finding a map in your neighborhood, whether that be the ant or your own two feet or the Bob White quail. We would map for 20 minutes in your nearby nature while I am here to answer questions, but I would be sitting in my nearby nature. And then we come back together and we talk about what we found and all those cool observations. And um, the classes are good for any age, correct? Correct. I so, have yeah, take us through with adults in the same class. 
Everybody yeah, so take can us learn to, something. Take us through the different levels, you know, that um, you um, incorporate for the different ages or the okay. different experience levels too. Correct. So I never say that you have to do this if you're age five. I say when you're first starting out, let's make observations. Let's use the words I notice, I wonder, and it reminds me of. When we use those words as kind of prompts, then whether you're three or 33 or 303, you can go outside and draw a picture of what you notice, or you can write the words about what you notice. And um, you can definitely have some questions, some things you're still wondering. And when we come back together, we can try to answer those, but we may not, and that's okay. Um, and then what it reminds me of just makes a connection to your past memories and the things that are already in your head. It might remind me of grandma's sweater, and that's okay. Um, it remind, remind me of a silly story of when my daughter was five or six that just popped in my head while I was doing that. And that's what I write down. Um, so whether your mom, dad, grandma, or the child in the class, there's something that you can learn right there at the I notice, I wonder, and it reminds me of stage. When we move out of that, we want to work on making our page well-rounded. So um, kind of the next step on that ladder is making sure that every page has words, numbers, pictures, and color. So uh, again, we're taking that time to say, all right, did I describe my observation with as much detail as I could in the words? And when I drew my picture, did I do the very best job I can? Did I add labels? Did I put a little color in it so that when I see this a year from now, I remember that that flower was pink and not yellow, um, just the basics there. And then we take that next step up where we add metadata. And metadata is the science of um, nature journaling. It's the date, the weather, the time period, the location, the things that if someone wanted to recreate this page on the exact same date you did it, they could go out and do so. And then we add, um, some more scientific labels, um, some more scientific layers of zooming in and zooming out on something to get more detail. We add the layer of mapping and making sure we have an exact location, but that all comes later. And if we never make it there, that's okay too. Um, you know, we start low with words, pictures, and numbers. And I notice, I wonder, it reminds me of, and we go as far as you are comfortable going. Yeah. And I love that different ages and different experience levels can all participate in the same class. Yes, um, I like that multi-generational information uh, exchange. So sometimes my three-year-old that comes regularly to my Field Notes Friday class will say something and I'll have this grown adult go, wow, I didn't know that. And it's just because they've spent, it's sad to say, but the three-year-old may have spent more time outside than that grown adult had. And so- Yeah, and, well, and, and children notice different things too. And so right. it, it just adds to everybody's experience. It, it's just a very rich tapestry when we, we include all ages. I love that. Okay, so your classes with the plenary start on June 4th. And I love some of the names that you've picked or the themes that you've picked for the classes, like um, making connections and noticing and wondering. I just love those kinds of themes. And um, you also said that anyone that joins the class will, like what kind of benefits are they going to get out of it um, for, for joining in? So research shows that children who spend time outdoors are happier, healthier, and smarter. That's kind of the tagline for children being in nature. And one of the things that we notice is building a community around nature journaling gives those students and those children and those families even a way to get outside that's not scary, no matter what your race, culture, inclination is, getting outside and connecting with nature builds a community that is all inclusive and loving and welcoming. And that helps with that healthy, happier, healthier, smarter uh, kind of tagline that we use. Yeah, well, you know, um, nature journaling and, and nature study are kind of considered parts of the riches of a Charlotte Mason education. And I like to call them the joy subjects because it, scientific studies have proven that these kinds of activities lower the stress hormones in our bodies and they Correct. increase the bonding hormones in our bodies. And so when we do activities like nature study and nature journaling with others, we, we are automatically creating a bond. And like you said, a community. And I just love that. Um, oh, go ahead. 
So I was going to say it's a rich tapestry that, of course, Charlotte Mason knew and Anna Comstock knew, and we seem yeah. to have forgotten somewhere along the way. Yeah. And it's nice to see uh, these families that I work with on a regular basis getting back to nature. And that's what it feels like for me. It feels like we're coming home. So wonderful. Well, Larry Joe, thank you. I'm so excited that you're joining us at the plenary. And um, if any, when you, if people want to join the classes, they just need to go to the plenary website, cmplenary.com and mm -hmm. sign up. It, you'll have a class this summer, every Friday. And then we have some more good things coming in the fall with you. We do. So, I can't yes. wait for fall. So thank, thank you so much, fun. Larry Joe. Appreciate sure. it. See you Bye. later. Bye.